Hello friends and welcome back to Foundational Truths. I'm Nyanda. I'm so glad you have joined me today. So I just have a word of encouragement that the Lord laid on my heart and I'm going to go ahead and share that with you. So I'll start off with a question this time. My question to you is, are you at the point where you feel like quitting? You want to quit believing in what God told you. You want to quit this path that you're on. It, it feels, it's not feeling like you thought it would feel and you've just had enough. Are you at that point that you just feel like quitting? We can all agree that quitting on, on God or quitting on in quitting in believing what he said he will do is not a good idea. In fact, it's a very bad idea. That's going to leave you feeling hopeless and destitute. But whenever you come to a point that you feel like quitting, it's not so much that you want to quit, but really it could be a signal that your soul needs to take a break. You've been through a lot. So your soul is tired, you're weary, you're exhausted, and you may just need to take a break. And that break, that resting period will give you time to be replenished. The thing is, we are spirit, soul, and body. And so what happens to one part of us affects all of us. So you've been through a lot of spiritual warfare. And so that Warfare, spiritual warfare not only affects your spirit, man, it affects your emotions as well as your body. And when your body is tired, you start yawning, right? That's your body's signal that, hey, you're tired, you may feel fatigued, and, and you just, you, you need to rest. So when your body's tired, you go to bed earlier, you get a good night's sleep, and you rest. But what happens when your soul is tired? How does your soul find rest? And that's what we're going to talk about today. How does your soul find rest? Because when your body gets a good night's rest, the next morning you feel rejuvenated, you feel replenished. And some of sometimes we're so exhausted, even after sleeping for long hours, we're still tired. So we, we our body is still demanding that we get more rest the following night. And it will tell you when it is replenish and that's how it is with our souls when our souls which is our mind our will and our, our emotions when it's been through a lot at some point it's going to say hey listen i'm tired perhaps you feeling like you want to quit is is your soul's equivalent of you yawning when your body's tired and so this is a sign that my friend you perhaps need to not just skip from one thing and go right into another but perhaps you need to just take a break just a brief one and it's not like a break that you're not doing anything it's just take it easy for a moment and recalibrate yourself and get back in there but so like i i mentioned earlier spiritual warfare takes a lot out of us it takes a lot out of us because it affects our soul and our bodies for instance you use up a lot of energy to pray I, I remember a few months ago, the Holy Spirit was, I could tell he really wanted to go deeper and to go longer in prayer. And I mean, I really wanted to, but I just, I just said, Lord, I do not have the physical capacity to pray anymore. And, and I felt, you know, I really know I needed to, but I was just so physically exhausted and I just knew that I could not pray any longer and I so wanted to and it felt like I missed out on something and I probably did um, but I just did not have the physical capacity to go longer I was just so exhausted because my sleep was not good prayer it, it, though it is a spiritual thing it, your soul and your body needs to be aligned with that spiritual practice of prayer we are three parts. So what we do with one part affects the other part. But what we need to do is we need to, our, our bodies always try to dictate. Our bodies always try to go on like it's the master. Really, our spirit man should be the master. And then our soul, our, our, our soul should get direction from our spirit. And then our body from the soul. 
So it's spirit, then soul, then body. And that's how the direction that you should allow yourself to be led in. So you use up a lot of energy to pray. And we see even Jesus, he prayed so intensely that scripture said that his sweat became like drops of blood. So Jesus, um, he knew he was about to be arrested to be be crucified. And of course, being God, he knew what would happen. And he felt that. He felt that in his soul. The scripture says he walked away about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed. And then this is what Jesus said. He said, Father, if you're willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. That an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. So regardless of what period you're in in your life, you always need to pray because you. one of the ways we gain strength is through prayer. So don't forsake your prayer life. And then he, he prayed more fervently and he was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like drops of blood. So Jesus was feeling what was uh, about to happen to him. And Matthew described this feeling. Matthew wrote, Jesus said, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. And, and one version says, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. So my friend, I don't know if you're feeling like your soul is dying a little each day because things are not unfolding uh, the way you, you thought they would or as quickly as you thought they would. And, and today I just pray that the Lord will give you strength and replenish you as you go through your journey. So fighting in the spirit, my friends, affects your entire being, which would explain why you may be feeling weary and exhausted and the story i want to quickly draw your attention to is that of elijah and this story can be found in first kings chapter 18 and 19. so if you're feeling drained and exhausted and even depressed this is going to really help you out so elijah had just been greatly used by yahweh and he had a showdown with baal's prophet on Mount Carmel and of course Yahweh prevailed and when King Ahab he was an unrighteous king uh, of, of Israel at the time when he came home and he told his wife Jezebel what had happened she pretty much placed a hit on Elijah and of course Elijah fled for his life so Ahab, Ahab was a pretty wicked man but his wife Jezebel was, I mean, she was, whew, she was really something. And it seemed like Ahab and Jezebel had this really, this, this, this kind of warped relationship that he, he, what, whatever happens to him that he doesn't like, he goes home and he sulks to his wife because he knew she would take care of it. She was uh, an, an evil woman. She was very evil. And so, of course, when she put a hit on Elijah, he fled for his life. And then Elijah got to a point where he just was so exhausted from running away and hiding in caves and, and doing all sorts of things. And he, I, I guess at this point, he felt like, man, I'm, a, I'm doing God's will and things are still not turning around for me. He says one thing after another, like, when is my change going to come? I would imagine this would these would be some of the thoughts going on in Elijah's mind. And so in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 3, this is what the scripture says. Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He went to Beersheba. Then he went on alone into the wilderness, traveling all day. He sat under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. And this is what he said. He said, I have had enough, Lord. Take my life from no better than my ancestors who have already died. And then he lay down and slept under the broom tree. But as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there beside his head was some bread baked on hot stones and a jar of water. 
So he ate and drank and laid down again. I'm going to read a few more verses. Then the angel of the Lord came again and touched him and said, get up and eat some more or the journey ahead will be too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank and the food gave him enough strength to travel 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. And there he came to a cave where he spent the night. So we see that Elijah, having been through all this, he felt completely defeated. And it's okay, okay for you to feel the feelings that you feel at times. You're human, so you're going to feel like quitting sometimes. Sometimes you feel like you've just had it. You feel defeated. Look at Elijah, look what he just did. He just called fire to come down from heaven and then the, in the next moment he's running for his life and he's feeling depressed and he's just saying, I can't take this anymore. And so some of you may be feeling this way as well. You're just feeling defeated. You're feeling like, man, like when am I gonna catch a break? I've been doing all this. Elijah, he confronted the false prophets. He spoke up when all of Israel was choosing darkness. And now he found himself in a wilderness. And he just had enough. He just felt like he couldn't handle it. And plus, he felt all alone. And so this is what Elijah did, which is a great uh, example for us to follow, a great blueprint for us to follow. He expressed to God how he feels. But when you go into prayer, that's one part you can't neglect. Whether you're, you're resting or taking a break from your regular duties or whatever you're doing, you have to still go into prayer because that's one way that you will receive strength. You still need to read scriptures. That's another way you re receive strength. You got to keep that spirit man built up. And so he went to God. He told him exactly how he felt. So when you go to God, he doesn't want you to be disingenuous with him. He wants you to be completely, completely authentic and just telling him, playing, placing everything at his feet. He said, come on to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So if you're feeling defeated, you're feeling hopeless, you're feeling like quitting, come to God. Sit at the feet of Jesus. Tell him how you feel. Express it with words, with tears, whatever you choose. And he said, that's his promise, he said, he's going to give you rest and he's going to give you exactly what you need you know elijah was in the wilderness and he felt so lonely and twice the angel came and touched him i'm assuming he came in human form sometimes when we're we're going through all this we just need a human touch we just need that human touch and the angel came and touched elijah that touch i would imagine meant a lot to him it was like god saying hey i see you and when elijah expressed himself to god he laid down and god allowed him to rest so sometimes we just really need a good night's rest as well we need a good a good night's rest so so if you battle insomnia talk to the lord about it change some habits before you go to bed there, there are lots of articles on that online. But sometimes all you need is a good night's rest. And Elijah was able to sleep under that tree. And the angel came and touched him. And then he gave him food. Not once, but twice. He gave him food. He didn't just give him food the first day and say, hey, that's enough. That's all you need. No, Elijah needed more food. And he gave him that food. And, and the scripture says that this sustained him 40 days and nights. So Elijah needed that period of rest for his soul to be replenished. 40 days and 40 nights. Listen, he had been through a lot, especially the, the, the last part leading up to uh, defeating the prophets of Baal. He'd been through a lot. And so he needed that 40 days and the 40 nights. So however long you need to rest and be replenished, you're going to work with the Holy Spirit and you're going to know when you're ready to go back. You're, the angel gave him food because he said he needed it for the journey ahead. And so you too need to be refreshed and replenished because your journey is not yet over. It's not yet over. Elijah felt like throwing in the towel at that time 
but his journey was not yet over and neither is yours. And so don't quit. Don't think you have to quit. Just take a break and allow the Lord, allow the Holy Spirit to replenish you. Like Elijah needed that rest and that food for the journey ahead, you need that to be rested and replenished to rebuild. We talked about the last time having stepped into that rebuilding season. Do you need strength and you need direction for your season of rebuilding? And I'll close off with this. A tired person lacks focus and clarity. If you're tired, like when I'm tired, I'm pretty sure that my IQ goes down. I don't remember names as easily. Things don't come to me as quickly. It's just how we're wired. We're wired that our bodies need rest and our minds need rest as well. So friend, my encouragement to you today is do not quit. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up and think that God has forgotten about you. He has not. And so instead of quitting, do this option instead. Take some time and rest so you can be replenished. And again, you're not going to stop praying. You're not going to stop ingesting the scriptures, even if that means ingesting, uh, I don't know, five verses. It, it, just do something that is strengthening your spirit, man. You need to be replenished. What this looks like to be rested and replenished, what this looks like is it could be spending a day at the spa. It could be going on vacation if you're able to. It could be getting coffee or tea. I like tea with a friend. It could be going on a bike ride, something you haven't done for your, a while, getting a massage. It could be anything like that, just something that replenishes you. So friend, take a break and rest up because this will reset you to properly rebuild. Thank you so much for listening and I will speak to you soon. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.